I'm Todd Birdsong. I'm the director of the Clemens Fine Arts Center at West Kentucky Community and Technical College. And welcome to another edition of Stage Sessions. Uh, today's guest we have Sandy Miller Sasso. She's a retired art educator and artist. Sandy, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, I've, I've, I've been wanting to talk to you about all kinds of things for so long. And we've known each other a few years. Um, just to start off, let's give everybody a little bit of background um, about you. Okay. Um, I grew up in North Carolina. Um, how did I get to Murray? Uh, Murray State used to have a grad program, an MA. So after I did undergrad school in Greensboro, North Carolina, having grown up in rural North Carolina on a big farm, um, I came to Murray in 1980 and was only going to stay for a year, <laughs> but I ended up staying. Um, I'm a painter and a drawer, but lately I've been doing photographs. I'm very influenced by my life in the rural settings and my work usually has a lot of space and shows that, reflects that. Um, I got a degree in art ed as an undergrad and didn't use it for years and years. I did work as an artist in residence with the Kentucky Arts Council. So that did get me into the local schools in Callaway County. And then um, eventually I started working there at the, in the county schools full time. So a lot of your work, uh, especially painting and drawings and even the photography um, that you've started doing is very nature centric. Right. I mean, I'll, I would say exclusively yeah. that. Um, so uh, how is that, um, how does, how does that connect to your, to your life? I mean, what, what, what is it about um, about those elements, about those natural elements um, that, that you're attracted to. Wherever I lived as a kid growing up, you could just see for miles. Um, it was amazing. We lived on hills. You could see forever. And then my, both my parents grew up in the mountains of North Carolina, close to Virginia, not close to, not Asheville, but close to Virginia. And um, old mountains, the Appalachians are such old mountains. It just was always this immense space at my beck and call, it, except for when I lived in Greensboro, North Carolina, which was a great town, but it was close to the mountains. So um, I did my early work as an undergrad. There's people. I, I can draw and paint people, um, but I don't know. I was just more attracted to the natural space the feeling of great distances and um, objects. And that may have to do with, if you depict people, you have to get people. I don't like to work from photographs. Okay. So that makes it easier. And I like to work from observation. It's how I was taught at UNC Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And until, er, until grad school, it's just what I did. I looked at things and I depicted them. I lit them and I depicted them. Now I went through a period in grad school where I abandoned that. It was a good thing um, because I worked, it was still my personal stories I was telling, but I told them through metaphor and that helped me and that has stayed with me, even though those um, invented forms and places that I depicted, I, I didn't need those anymore after a while. And I went back to observational, my true love. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I learned to not be tied to the physical world, right? I learned to right. be able to, surrealism is a good word for what I do um, okay. because there are recognizable forms and spaces, but they, they aren't like real. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So like some of the objects are presented in, in, in a real sense, but in the environment and in the, in the way that you're, the way that you're constructing the image. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it's unreal. Uh-huh, right. Real. 
Yeah. Surreal. My research staff for the show, which is me, <laughs> um, knows that you live in a place called Sassoville. <laughs> so where is Sassoville? What's its population? And what's its main export? <laughs> Sassoville's main export is good food and topiaries. <laughs> um, yeah, I live with my husband, Paul. Our daughter, Maggie, has moved on to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So she's an artist too. But um, yeah, Sassoville, it's, a, it's an idea. <laughs> it's a uh, remarkable place on earth. Population is two. Well, and we have our cat. And um, greatest export would be food, bread, homemade bread, mm. art. Art, yeah. right. So you have your yeah. studios, you both have studios there at your house. We your built house. all of our buildings. Okay. Paul Sasso, Sasso is an Italian word, and that's like a disease of building. <laughs> he, um, he likes to build buildings. So our, and all of our buildings are kind of small, so we just have lots and lots of them. We, we've decided it's an art farm. Okay. But, but yes, our studio is bigger than our house. It's 100 feet from our house. Um, Paul's a woodworker, so he's a wood shop, and then a um, bench room to, you know, put everything together. And then I have a studio upstairs, and it's really, they're lovely um, rooms. My studio, I'm very lucky to have my spacious and beautifully lit right. studio. I'm really lucky. But we did build all the buildings, so. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So you're married to an artist. Mm -hmm. um, I am not. And that worked great for me. I mean, my, ah. my, my story would be um, my wife is very grounded, and that's great for me because if I didn't have somebody like that, hmm. um, there's no telling oh, yeah. what would happen. Um, so <laughs> you, you're both artists. So how does that work with you and Paul? Um, it always worked fine. It was never, we always got so much done. I, I just can't. I look back, I keep a journal. I've always, I'm a journal keeper, and I will look back at what we were doing 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, and I just can't believe what all we got done. Building buildings, raising a kid, who's an artist, um, you know, just planning, do, teaching, doing all these things. We, I don't know, it just worked fine for us. So I can't imagine it any other way. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, so do you do you talk to each other about the like like pieces that you're working on or ideas that you're having? Does one person influence the other sometimes? I can't imagine that that doesn't happen on at least a subconscious level, but mm -hmm. I mean do you do you actively work together any? We have not we have not actively worked together other than Sassoville. Yeah which is an ongoing interior and exterior. It's an ongoing art piece there at the art farm. No, but no, we, now Paul will um, build a frame for me, but that's different. You know, that's different than like making utility. art together. Yeah. And he doesn't make all the frames. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I would not ask him to do that. Um, he's got enough to do. But yeah, we, interestingly, we have not, made art together um some of the element some of the same elements will show up in our work flags things blowing a penchant for centralized imagery and symmetry mm -hmm. um that's interesting happens. that you say that because that's exactly uh one of the words that came to me almost immediately when i started looking through your website and i was looking at your paintings yeah and the photography um, yeah. you, you, you do, you, you create this really wonderful kind of expansive negative space. And then you have an element that you center in it in some way. And, in, and a lot of your work is very balanced, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm not a religious person now, but I grew up, you know, we went to church and I think there's something about church, not this one, but and just you're sitting and there's this central focus and, you know, it just all lines up. Right. And 
I think for me that's a symbol of just of uh, rightness, of stability, of things being the way they should be centered and and to try to calm what's going on around me right and My, that's that's what i take away when yeah. i look at your work that's calmness uh, a, a stillness a balance is really kind of what i always kind of come back to mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. when i'm when i'm looking at it and really like thinking about it so. yeah but i think it has when you do center something right in the middle because you know you don't usually see things that way right um I mean, this is, but you know, it, it makes you stop. It makes you pause. It's unusual. And you're taught not to do it right, compositionally. Right. Don't do that. <laughs> but I've just always felt drawn to that. But it does have a religious quality, a quality of, in some movies, you'll see it every once in a while. Wes Anderson uses symmetry in a real interesting way. There'll be all this stuff going on, and then there'll be this symmetrical scene, mm-hmm. you know, where everything, and then, and you just sort of, it just affects you, and then you'll go on to other things, but right. yeah, filmmakers use it. Yeah, right. Um, so let's talk about some of your work. Um, you want to start out with some paintings? What do you, um, there, isn't there a piece, what's the, there's a piece, Homeland? Yeah. Can we talk about that? We can talk about that. Um, I think 2005. I double checked before I came. Okay. Yeah. And I've been rebuilding my website. So, so looking at the archive of my work, but, um, which has given me an interesting overview because I just, you know, I hadn't looked at it in a while. And then to see it kind of all laid out, it's like seeing what relates, what, like, oh, I'd forgotten about that, you know, interesting that I was doing that then, and then I kind of did it again. Homeland uses several elements that I use repeatedly. In the background of it is a topographical map, 3D topographical map of those mountains I mentioned earlier in northwestern North Carolina. And there's a plumb bob hanging and it's very symmetrical. It's, to me, just a stunningly gorgeous object that's useful to calculate dead level or, you know, true. It's called true. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I, set up these still lifes so you know i've got i'm climbing up i'm climbing on ladders i'm hanging things so i situated it so that that tip of that plumb bob hits exactly where our property is in the mountains in north carolina um, where our people have lived since the late 1700s wow yeah so there are those elements and um underneath the plumb bob is a shell it looks like a bowl but it's a shell and if the plumb bob fell, it would break it. So there's that element, there's that tension. Right. Yeah. So uh, I want to back up just a little bit. So you have yeah. this, you have an extensive history with this land. Uh-huh. So yeah. where, is, is the farm still in your family? Yeah. Well, that's... My dad okay. kept buying property. Some was inherited and he bought some and it was cheap. <laughs> it was so <laughs> affordable because it's like mountainous and, right. you know, but um, yeah, it's still in the family. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I haven't been able to go there much pandemic. You know, I haven't right. been able to go there much lately, but um, yeah, so it is, it is ancestral. It is sacred land. And that image really is about my dad mm-hmm. who was a farmer a cattle farmer. He also raised corn, soybeans. He did everything you needed to do to support a cattle farm, right? And he built, he was a difficult man to live with. Very, he'd been hurt a lot. He had, he had learned to protect himself with an armor of, uh, an impenetrable armor. He wasn't easy to live with at all, but he built the best fences. They were just perfect, you know, and we would, right around and he would criticize everybody else's fences. That's gonna fall down, that's not straight. You know, we grew up knowing 
about everybody's fences. So that, and just that, the difficulty of that relationship right. um, and how it lingers has influenced a lot of my work. And there's another one in that series. I tend to work in series, at least two, if not more. So there's another one, almost identical in its setup, and it's called Hawk Guardian. And I think of my dad as the hawk. Not the friendliest of birds, but majestic and admirable. Same background, same topographical background. Right. Well, just hearing the story, um, I'm sure I'm going to go back and look at the work again. Yeah. And see, you know, see the, 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 there's a lot more depth there to it um, than, what, than what I could just see on first glance. Yeah, everything's a symbol. Right. Yeah. And I use the symbols over and over again. They're, these objects are in my studio, so I just pick and choose, you know, might be a leaf um, that just... Uh, a lot of the things I depict are things that just, they just appear. I'll be walking down the road and there will be a leaf laying there and it's like, that's the one, you know. Right. Just, it came chance. to me. Right. Yeah, it is chance. Yeah. That yeah. happens a lot. Well, and I, I think you just, I tune into it. Right. You know, it's not, it's not being lazy. It's being, it's noticing, <laughs> I think, you know, yeah. And then I have this whole array of little drawers full of things that I choose from. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my, my space at my house is very similar. Even though I'm not a drawer or painter, um, I'm, I'm still very object-based. Yeah. And in collections, uh, my wife hates it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm well, not hates it, but it but is. It, 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 it's it, stuff, it, right? It is, it is. It is it stuff. Becomes, it becomes a problem. Yeah. Um, and yeah. As, I, as I get older in life, I think about, you know, my kids having to deal with it uh, or somebody else having to deal with it at some point. Yeah. You know? So uh, I, need to get, uh, I need to get a plan. <laughs> I've been, I've been finding new homes for things yes. in my studio, but more the kind of thing that, like, oh, well, we don't know what to do with this. Let's just put it in the studio for a while. That, that kind of thing that other people might put in a basement. It goes in my studio. So yeah, I've been, really, I've been finding homes for those things. Well, let's talk about some other work. Okay. How about um, Short Summer? Yeah. Let's talk about that piece. Okay. Um, it is about, you know, I've got a, I, I had a show in Louisville in, I think, 92, and I did drawings and text, and I wrote a short prose that, that I hope is as mysterious and open-ended as the images themselves, but I think I'll read that. Sure. I'll sure. read that statement from that. And in redoing my website, I included some of these statements. Oh, 1990. I can't remember. It's crucial that we remember for them. They were hard years, those few years during the Depression when they lived in California. All the young men in the family had gone there to deliver mail. Then she moved out with the kids. She cooked for everyone, her family and the boarders who stayed with them. But it was warm there. There were sidewalks and trees so different from the ones in the mountains. She was never one to embroider speech, so her Spoken recollections of living there were not so different from her memories of having rheumatic fever or of teaching for that year before she got married or of going to boarding school. But it must have been like paradise for her. Her kids were little, her husband was alive, everyone was young and healthy, and the world was still full of promise. What remains is a family snapshot, beautifully composed and focused with a delicate, elaborate border that whispers of finery and magic. One more paragraph. Years later, long after he died, when the kids had gone off to begin their own summers, she built a patio with wrought iron railings beside the huge mimosa tree in her yard. It soared above the busy two-lane street and the ancient mountains. The grandchildren and great-grandchildren were warned never to play on the delicate monument that grew more and more fragile with the years. It was her one extravagance, that patio, and it was her monument to the brief summer of her life. 
That's very nice. Thanks. It's very beautiful. Very picturesque. I mean, you can mm. definitely see that yeah. when you were Thanks. reading. Thanks. Thanks. No, you're welcome. So in your, on your website, you talk about um, this work is a, it's kind of a, of a, a combination or I don't know, forging or melding or um, you, you put together some past history with where you are now. Is the, am, I, am I getting that right? Oh, in some of the statements on yes. the web. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. right. Um, you know, I got really, really, really busy when I was a teacher. And I had to, like, short summer was done before I started teaching full time. So once I had, even though I had a child, and, and that was busy, but um, once I started teaching, I had to condense everything. Right. So instead of having many objects depicted in an image, there would just be one. So I, I distilled greatly, but I found, but it was better than not working. Right. The temptation, if you're working full time, is to just stop making art. And I wasn't going to do that. And I'm so glad I didn't. Um, I did want to mention legacy today because I've, I have cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer a year ago. And it's bad, it's stage 4B, so I've really, thus the hairdo, so I've really been thinking about legacy a lot in the last year. I, I made a list, I've been trying to get all these things done that, so, I, so somebody else didn't have to do it. Right. I felt that responsibility weighing on me, but um, thinking of my legacy as an artist and a teacher just brings me the greatest relief and satisfaction and pride. You know, I'm so glad. I have no regrets about what I've done. I've influenced people. And, you know, we live with art in our house of folks who have passed on. And we think of them every time we look at that. And so I'm glad to know that because of my art that I've done that too. Right. Yeah. No, that's a beautiful sentiment. Thanks. Um, that's, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little speechless, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking about mortality a lot the last year. <laughs> oh. In a pandemic. It's just well, been very bizarre. Right, right, yeah. right. And so, um, like this past year, so we, you know, we're socially distanced. Uh, you were compromised more so right. than, than many others. Right, so right. what's... You know, without going into a lot, maybe a lot of detail, but I mean, uh, what's what's that been like this past year for you and Paul? Well, you know, the great thing about Sasoville, it's not a bad place to be sequestered at all. You, If you don't want to be around somebody, you just go to another building. We have six buildings. <laughs> <laughs> you can always work on a building or work <laughs> in a building. It's been I've been a little worried about myself that it hasn't bothered me more. <laughs> I've missed friends. I've missed my daughter. We don't have good internet, so we can't Zoom, which may be a blessing right. in disguise. But um, it's, I'm an introvert, and I've been okay with it. And I had started doing photography in 2018, just accidentally kind of started doing photography. So that still works for me. Mm -hmm. um, I've be, enjoyed that quite a bit. Actually. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the the and again the the imagery the composition um, is very much like your paintings and drawings. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's usually a, a a center focus piece. The the work that I'm thinking of right now I can't recall the titles, but they're not as symmetrical. Mm -hmm. uh, there's usually the center piece is, is in a third. Mm -hmm. either a third left or third right, right or something like that, which I, I enjoy. And there are some pieces that are very much kind of centered and, there are, yeah. and balanced. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoy um, you bringing those those analog elements into like this digital media. Ah, um, yeah. And I think hmm. you do it very well also. Thanks. So um, it's always good to keep kind of challenging yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it was a total accident. I had my iPad in my studio one day and you know it's got a camera <laughs> and I would I in the past I would photograph my still life setups with all the tape and the 
wire and the, you know, just, just as a record because I spent a lot of time setting them up for the paintings. But one day I just did some photographs without all that tape and stuff, you know, and, and, I, and then I messed with editing. It was a total, uh, totally unplanned, which is what made it so much fun. Right. So, um, you know, I've got all my objects in my drawers. I could pull them all out. And it was just like, I felt like a kid again. It was so much fun. And I could go through ideas so fast. Right, right. You just make some new discoveries. And then I got a little bit, you know, got a better camera. We have a Leica. And then I had a, I got a Canon. Sure. Um, rebel and uh, you know with a little better lenses and started feeding them into uh, just using an app that allowed me to combine images so I could do what I'd been doing with my drawings and paintings all these years a lot faster right right to be able see to see the process. results yeah yeah right. so much fun Great. and having been getting rid of objects now for the last year the great thing about digital photography the image exists but it doesn't have to be physical that you have to right. store and move around. Right. You you make it <laughs> be real when you want it to. Right, right, right. It's amazing. It's so perfect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having a blast. Doing well, it. it looks great. Sandy, before you leave, uh, I want to ask you about your doilies. <laughs> I love your doilies. It's, they're one of my favorite uh, pieces of work that you do and they're so different from everything else that you do. They are. So what can you Except tell they're us? symmetrical most of them. I've always had doilies. They're around. And so I just grabbed one I don't know what made me do it, but I just started embroidering words on them. Like little things that I say that my cat says, like, this is not what we do. My cat has a lot of rules. So this is not what we do is on a doily or so terrible that's on a doily so it's been so much fun i just learned one stitch and i just have fun doing it i don't know it just makes me feel like i've made those words live longer than i will right, well, you know? right. yeah well, they are. They're really Thank fantastic. you. They're, they're fun. Fantastic. They're just really fun. Sandy, thank you for coming out today and spending some time with us, uh, sharing your art, sharing your words and your stories with us. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's been an honor. Thanks for having me. Well, you're very welcome. I am Todd Birdsong. I'm the director of the Clemens Fine Arts Center at West Kentucky Community and Technical College. This has been another episode of Stage Sessions, and I hope to see you again for the next one.